Good morning, I'm Philip Rice from St Giles Church in Desborough with this morning's thought for the day. And being Wednesday, we continue our series on the subject of church growth. This morning, I want to talk to you about evangelism. Now, I know that uh, some people find that a difficult word, a word that conjures up perhaps images of Billy Graham uh, speaking to huge crowds at Wembley Stadium. But evangelism is simply telling someone about Jesus. So it's a word we need to get to grips with because church growth means more people coming to know Jesus and more people coming to know Jesus means someone needs to tell people about Jesus. And that's evangelism, telling people about Jesus. Corrie ten Boom once said, you are either a missionary or a mission field. Everyone, in other words, falls into one of those two categories. And as we know from the closing chapter of Matthew's Gospel, Christians are commanded by the risen Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. In other words, we're called to be missionaries. But it's not something to be frightened of because Jesus went on to say, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. In other words, we don't have to be missionaries in our own strength, but with Jesus at our side. If you're not ready to be a missionary, then by default you must be a mission field. Someone waiting uh, for someone else to be a missionary to them. But actually, I believe we're all mission fields. We all need to be constantly learning more about Jesus and how much better life is with Jesus than without Jesus. So that armed with that sure and certain knowledge, we will want to tell others. Reverend Hannah has told us many times that discipleship is about following in the master's footsteps. Endeavouring to be like him to do what he would do. So when it comes to evangelism, the obvious thing to do is to follow the example of Jesus. And when Jesus evangelized, he often used one of two pictures or metaphors, farming and fishing. One of his uh, most well-known farming metaphors is the one in Mark, uh, Mark's Gospel chapter four about a farmer who went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell among, along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other well, seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So are you scattering seeds? Some people won't respond positively and we should expect disappointments. Jesus told his disciples to expect it, so do pray that your seed will fall on fertile soil and celebrate as a church when the response is positive. But perhaps each of our churches should also prepare opportunities to offer people support in times of disappointment. But one thing is absolutely certain. There will be no harvest if we don't sow the seeds. Secondly, Jesus used fishing metaphors. In fact, when he called his first disciples, we're told in Mark uh, chapter 1, that he was walking beside the Sea of Galilee when he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. 
If like those first disciples we're going to fish for people, the first thing we need to do is get in the boat and sail to where the fish are. I'm afraid for, for many of us the boat is tied up in the harbour. We might be keeping it in good order, ready to go out to sea, but actually we're not going to get in the boat. We're reluctant to actually get in and sail to where we might cast our nets and bring in the potential haul. In this metaphor perhaps we'll need help to pull in the nets and bring the fish safely to shore. We need to work collectively as churches, not just maintaining the boat, but actually getting in it, choosing where to fish and helping one, one another to bring in the nets. I encourage all the churches in the Benefice to think about these metaphors, farming and fishing, and to learn from the Master. Pray together and plan together how you might best scatter seed in your communities, how and where to sail your fishing boat, and how you might work together to bring in the nets. It's important to pray about these things because why would our churches grow if we don't pray for it? We need to desire it and pray for it. So let's finish with the church growth prayer. Let's pray it together. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, joy to our worship and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you.